Hey, what's up guys? I'm Glenn with DIY Creators and today I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how you can make your own chair really slick, simple, and modern chair with hidden storage and also a place to put your books if you're reading. So you can use this as a reading chair, whatever you like. The best part about this, you only need a circular saw, a drill, and also an orbital sander. But another kicker to that is you can also go to your hardware store and while you're picking up the wood there, you can ask them to cut all the dimensions down for you. And that should make your job a whole lot easier when you get home. With all that being said, let's get started. The only saw I'll be using on this project is my circular saw and a circular saw guide. The entire chair will be made from only half a sheet of plywood. If you're new to the channel, I have a series of videos that's catered towards limited tools. And this build is actually gonna be a limited tools build. Now the first rip I'm making here, that will be for the back and one part of the seat. The second rip I'm making, this will be for the seat and the two arms. I am now cutting the seat to the chair. Next, I'm gonna set the blade of the circular saw to make a 10 degree cut. Now, I find out later on that it probably would have been a better degree if I set it to like 15 degrees. I probably would have had more of a lean to the chair. Now, as you can see here, using a circular saw guide is a no-go. So I'm just gonna use a guide as a straight edge so that I can make that angle cut to the back. I'm gonna make one final cut and this piece will be for the removable part of the seat. To help identify which piece goes where, I decided to put a quick label on each pieces and that way I keep things in order. And at this point, the blade is put back to make a straight cut. After removing the access, I'm gonna now make the first cut for one arm. I'm gonna take the same piece and then use that as a template to mark the second arm. The plan is to utilize as much as you can from a half a sheet of plywood. So I'm gonna use this piece here as a spacer between the two pieces of the seat. I would need to make two pieces of these cuts before assembling. Next, I'm gonna cut that piece down so that it can fit between the two sides of the arms. Probably my most nerve wracking part of all my projects and that's when I have to make decisions because we all wanna get them right. The thing is, I, I can't figure out should I round this over or should I cut an angle here? And the thing is like, I like the boxy look about this and I wanna keep it that way. But so what I'm probably gonna do is just round it over with the sander and try to keep it with this kind of look as much as possible. The next thing is picking the color. And I really hate picking colors because if you pick a color, it's so tough to undo. You rather wanna do the project all the way over again. And I'm really not up for that. So that's kind of where I'm at at this point. The next thing I'm gonna do now is gonna sand it down and then we're gonna start painting and then I'll see you at the end of the project. And now that we're getting into the fun part of the project, it's gonna sand it down with 120 grit first, then I'll come back and lightly sand with 220 grit to smooth it out. Hopefully I didn't get chewed out too much for using screws in this build, but the reason why I'm going with screws is to basically help the viewers that have less tools and wanna be able to tackle some of these builds. So this one is for you. So what I just did was took a sheet of plywood and then I marked the thickness of it to the bottom side of each plywood. These will be for the arms. Next, I'm gonna mark both pieces at the same time so I can keep everything uniform for the screw holes. And to prevent any splits in the wood, just pre-drill each holes before you install in the screws. Apply wood glue to the bottom portion of the seat, then spread evenly. Next, you want to attach the side using screws and use clamps if you have to. Then do the same thing for the opposite side. And be sure to take a wet rag and remove any glue squeeze out. If you happen to have clamps, then here's where you can put them to use. If you don't, you can always wedge this in a tight corner or you can put weights on one side. I found the biggest book or magazine that I had on hand, placed that in this location and that set that area. As far as this back area back here, I have nothing to store in it, but you guys asked to see these, so I incorporate them whenever I can sneak them in. The back edge to the seat have the same pitch as the back of the seat. As long as I line up the front, I can bump the seat back up to the bottom of the seat. Carry out the same pitch on the side of the arm. And this way I can mark where the screw holes go. Again, I'm gonna take a piece of plywood to mark the outer edge and I'm gonna find the center of that, which is where the screw hole will be. I'm only gonna add one screw at the top because it will be secure from the bottom as well, which will also provide a cleaner look. Using the same method again, I'm gonna find the bottom, but this time I'm gonna drill in at an angle. 
And for the first screw, just double check before you continue. Just make sure that you're in the right location. And if everything looks good, then you can move on. Mark the screw holes evenly, pre-drill, and install the screws. To attach this bottom piece, I'm going to use some wood to hold these pieces into place while I screw it from the bottom. And this piece of wood in my hand will be the part that will be holding the latches into place. I'm going to end up using two latches, one on each side. I'm not big on reading instructions until I get stuck. So I'm not really sure how the instruction would tell you how to install these. After observing, I use the wings on the latch as spacers to push the catch back. Then secure the catch in place. And since I'm adding two of these, I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Ideally, this would be the view that's underneath the seat, and we want to make this as tight as possible. We want to make this as close as possible to look something like this. And to do that, I'm going to use two-sided tape, which this should hold both pieces together, allowing me to attach the latch easily. As I was removing the last piece of paper on the two-sided tape, I realized the piece of wood moved, leaving me very confused during the build. I was wondering what happened and why was my lock off. Now, of course, I fixed it, but I never noticed until during the editing process what really happened. So it's safe to say that the method does work. Just don't let your piece of wood move and you'll be fine. More than likely, you've seen these locks before. They're very popular and they're mainly used for kitchen cabinets and bathroom cabinets, keeping the little ones out. Simply place a magnet over the latch and the latch release. Assemble the seat support, apply a little glue on both sides, wedge that into place, install some screws, and this piece is set. So now is the best time to test everything and make sure everything lines up. Surprisingly, these latch actually hold on better than I thought it would. And now that looks good, it's time to attach that support piece into place. So at this point, I'm going to hit it with one more final sanding, removing all my pencil marks and winding over some of the edges. I use screw caps as an easy way of hiding the screw heads. If you want to take it a step further, you can always use wood filler to fill in all the screw heads, making those disappear. The paint choice here is a white latex high gloss paint with primer built inside of it. I'm not the one to tell you which one is better, whether if you go with primer separately versus paint, I, I don't know. I just know that this speed up the process. I ended up using a roller and also a paintbrush. The paintbrush was for all the tight spots and all the corners. I used a foam roller after brushing because that actually helps remove some of the brush marks while also delivering an acceptable finish on your workpiece. And the only thing left is to snap on the screw caps and then move on to the legs. Unfortunately, this back screw, I had to install that one at an angle because I was hitting the screw below. I don't know, but it's safe to say that little Leah likes this chair. I'm really happy with the way this chair came out. Obviously, it's not perfect, and there'd probably be some things that I could have done better. But overall, I like the chair, I like the design, and I can totally see myself making an upgrade version of this one. The cushion I'm using, I picked these up at my local Target. They're actually outdoor pillows. They're pretty durable and I use a two seat cushion for basically the back end of seat cushion. I'll have a link in the video description to the magnetic locks if you want to check those out. See I know the question is going to come up but I actually have nothing to hide in my house so I just wanted to add this as a feature to the chair and the reason why I got the idea is because as I was putting the chair together I saw this empty space in the back and I decided that it made sense to sneak this in the build. The book storage slash magazine storage, this idea actually came from the lady of the house and with all the ideas attached to this chair, I think those are the things that made this chair really cool and basically we're taking simplicity and making it interesting. And as far as the cost breakdown on this, I have $20 in plywood, $24 in seat cushion, and $49 on the legs. So just under $95, you could make your own custom chair. Don't forget, you can customize this with color, maybe switching up the legs, maybe doing something different, you know, making it personalized for you. And for a simple and easy DIY chair like this, 
let me know your thoughts. I want to know if this passed the DIY test. And I don't believe the screw caps look too bad in this design. I think it actually works out. And this is my don't try this at home moment. I've searched online and I could not find any weight limits on these legs. I'm not going to recommend you try these because I don't want to feel responsible or feel bad if somebody get hurt by a leg breaking. But all in all, I put a ton of weight on this and it actually worked out for me. So the total weight limit I put on this was 467 pounds. 187 of that was me and the rest of it was 280 pounds in weights. Now that's probably one thing or a few things that I could do differently but one of the main thing is the back part of the seat, I would probably sit that back more. So I would put more of a pitch to it, maybe cutting that at a 15 degree angle. Cause you know, right now it is pretty comfortable, but I think it could have been more relaxing if the seat was a bit leaned back. And with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the project. I will catch you guys on the next one. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check me out on Facebook, DIY Creators, and also on Instagram as DIY Creators 2015. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.